uh, church, uh, Central Trinity uh, Church family, whether you are with us this morning online uh, or whether you are with us in person, uh, it is great to be with you. I'm Pastor Steve. Uh, welcome to worship. Looking forward to what God is going to do during our time together and want to invite us to open now with a prayer. God, we thank you so much for your grace and, and faithfulness in our lives. We thank you for the opportunity to be with you. And Lord, we're looking forward to what you're going to do during our time in worship together this day. We ask that you would bless it, pour out your spirit upon it. God, we will seek to make ourselves open to whatever you want to say to us, to speak to us, to do in us, and God, to prepare to do through us, even in this coming week. God, we offer you this time. We're so grateful and excited to come together into it. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, Central Trinity. Glad to be back with you this morning. If you're able this morning, would you stand with us as we begin our worship? Lord, how you love me, I don't deserve grace on top of grace. More than I ask for, more than I'm worth, grace on top of grace. How sweet the sound, once lost, but now found, heaven came down in grace. From my sin and penalty, death the cross, you took my place with your grace on top of grace. Lord, how you love me, I don't deserve grace on top of grace. More than on top of grace and hallelujah I am free from my sin and penalty and death the cross you took my place with your grace on top of grace with your grace on top of grace Everyone feeling okay this morning? 
For those who are in-house and those watching online, you may have noticed that Jeff has remained the same to my right. Megan is no longer the same. Megan has been transformed. No, I just look like Megan. No, she just, no, no. So uh, this is the first Sunday where we have Caitlin uh, Thomas on board with us playing the keyboard and singing her female vocalizations, which you will get to hear previewed here in a moment. Uh, but we are so excited to have Caitlin on board with us. What an amazing talent, grown up in this church, and John Thomas is her daddy, so be nice to her and uh, all those kinds of things. But uh, we are so excited that she's on board with us. This morning, I wanted to um, add a new song, which is always dangerous as a musician, worship leader. We have a new person, a new instrument, a new voice, and two new songs this morning. Um, but this, this next song we're going to sing, I just wanted to give it a small introduction. Few songs that I come across really, truly impact me, um, lyrically speaking. This next one is, is so important, and it's a message we need to hear as Christians today, that it doesn't matter where we've come from, it doesn't matter what we've done, Jesus Christ still loves us and wants a relationship with us. And it's at his invitation that he has said, come, come on, come on to the table. So would you sing this new one with us this morning? looking in this is where grace begins we were hungry we were thirsty with nothing left to give oh the shape that we were in and just when all hope seemed lost love opened the door for us he said, come to the table, come join the sinners who have been redeemed, take your place beside the Savior, sit down and be set free, come to the table. These liars and these thieves, there's no one unwelcome here. And that sin and shame that you brought with you, you can leave it at the door and let mercy draw you near. Come to the table, come join the sinners who have been. Take your place beside the Savior. Sit down and be set free. Come to the table. To the thief and to the doubt, to the hero and the coward, to the prisoner and the soldier, to the young and to the older, all who hunger, all who thirst, all the last and all the first, and all the paupers and the princes, all who fail, you've been forgiven, all who dream and all who suffer, all who loved and lost another, all the chained and all the free, all who follow, all who Sit down and be safe. 
set free. Come to the table. Come to the table. Sit down and be set free. Come to the table. continue in worship this morning for those watching online and those in-house something else that I feel that we as Christians are dealing with what a beautiful invitation that we can come to the table but with all of the things going on in our world all of this COVID business that's going on there's so many mental stresses going on in the world today those who are worried about it those who are not worried about it those who are um, concerned about their loved ones and those who have had their life just disrupted because they can't go to work or they can't go out to their favorite restaurants or wherever they're going and some of us are just confined to home and some of us are just lonely and I just want you to understand that this next song that that uh, that Caitlin is going to lead for us this morning I want you to understand and truly take in the lyrics this morning God's promise is that he will never leave us and never forsake us so this morning we can boldly proclaim that I am not alone
Gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning thanking you for the fact that we know we are not alone. Oh, Father God, you've invited us to come to the table and to be seated next to you amongst all of the, the terrible things we've done in our life. The redeeming blood of Jesus Christ has given us the invitation to the table to be there with our Savior. And Father, all of this craziness that's going on in our world, we know that we can proclaim we are not alone. You are with us. And Father, for all of my brothers and sisters out in the world today that are struggling with everything going on. Father, draw them close and let them know that they are not alone. You are always with us. Father God, we love you. We praise you. And we thank you. We ask it in the power of Jesus' name this morning. Amen. Well, please feel free to be seated. I should say those that are in the house feel free to be seated. My guess is that those of you who are watching online are already seated. If you were like me back during the shutdown, you were seated with the recliner and the legs up and maybe sitting on the couch. And, uh, and if you're in-house and you've got the space and you want to put your feet up, I'm not going to say anything. Well, it is uh, good to be with you this morning as we continue our current uh, summer message series on uh, love. Uh, next Sunday, we're going to conclude this uh, current series. And then after Labor Day, uh, we're going to begin a new series that I'm really excited about called The Emotionally Healthy Church. And we'll be talking about that over the next couple of weeks. But I want to start this morning by asking you a question. What is the best way to get better at something? What is the best way to get better at something? If I want to if I want to get good at it, if I want to know how to do it and, and be able to understand what's the best way, uh, well, I would suggest that the initial way, best way or first thing, is to see it modeled by others, to see how it's done correctly. If you're working around the house, for example, or, or fixing something, to see how someone else is done. Sometimes we'll watch someone else and we'll see how they will say, oh, I understand now. We always learn faster, and that helps then when we begin to do it ourselves and learn from getting our hands you know, into the work uh, by seeing someone else then simply by, uh, by you know, doing it by trial and error. So related to the topic of love, since that's the theme right now, who do you think might be the best example to watch comes to be more loving? What do you think? Maybe Jesus? Uh, Jesus was the only person, according to the Bible, who ever lived a perfect life. And the greatest example of love toward others, of course, giving his life on the cross so that we could be in relationship with God now and forever. So maybe he would be the best one to look at, to, to, deter, to determine what real love looks like. In fact, in John chapter 13 and verse 34, Jesus said, A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. In other words, Jesus is saying, is, look, if you really want to love in a way that will be the greatest blessing to you, to others, to our world, then love the way I, Jesus said, love you. 
All your relationships patterned after that kind of love will be of greater blessing to you and to others. So today we're going to look at uh, three ways, I often will choose three main points, three ways that we can love others the way Jesus loves me, uh, and, and then uh, you know, uh, kind of see what we can learn from that. And the first that, that I'm going to offer up to you this morning is we can love like Jesus is by accepting others the way Jesus accepts me. By accepting others the way Jesus accepts me. Romans chapter 15 and verse 7. Actually, I saw this on the uh, sign out front of the Christian church at Dresden and uh, military on the way down to church this morning. Romans 15, 7 says to accept one another as Christ has accepted you. So followers of Jesus theoretically ought to be some of the most accepting people in the world when it comes to accepting and loving others. John 3 verse 17 tells us that God did not send Jesus into the world to condemn the world, to reject the world, but to save the world through him. So in spite of all our mistakes, all our mess ups, when we gave our life to Christ, he immediately accepted us. And while he leave us uh, necessarily in the same condition in which he finds us, he accepts us the way we are. And I, I would suggest that the deepest wounds we have ever received in our lives have been at the hands of the rejection of others. The opposite, of course, of acceptance. What hurt us most in our lives? When someone's put us down. When someone's taken advantage of us. When someone's told us we were worthless. Not going to amount to anything. It hurts when people reject us. Those are wounds that that are hard to, to, you know, like... Rejection can come from anywhere. It can come from so-called friends, from family members, from peers in the workplace, friends, boyfriends. can come uh, from uh, others uh, at school, uh, even in the life of the church. Everyone experiences rejection in life, and rejection creates some of the deepest wounds. In fact, if we're honest, to one degree or another, we all desire to be accepted by others. Who, who wakes up in the morning, I just want to get rejected today, right? We, we, we want to be accepted. We want to be loved. We want to be cared for by others. And we'll even take actions in our lives to try to avoid rejection and promote acceptance. It may affect the clothes we wear, the style of our hair, the beauty products that we use, uh, the, uh, how we relate to others. It may even impact our views and beliefs may be determined by those that we're around because we want to fit in, we want to be accepted rather than, you know, rejected. Indeed, our lives are filled with examples where we are seeking to reduce rejection and increase acceptance. Of course, the reality is that no matter what you do, someone will always reject you. Jesus was perfect, and they nailed him to a cross. The good news this morning is that God will never reject us. When we open our lives up to him through a relationship with Jesus Christ, he accepts us, warts and all. And that fact should fill us with joy and peace and hope about the lives that he calls us to live. And it should, the reality of it should drive us to be more accepting and loving of others. David, the human writer of Psalm chapter 27, verse 10, who committed adultery and then murder, uh, lying to cover it up, truly understood this when even he said that though my father and mother forsake me or reject me, the Lord God will receive me. Even in the spite of all the things that he had done, he knew that God would not reject him. Because we have been rejected many times during our lives and others have extended conditional love toward us, we have learned to place conditions on the love that we extend to others. I want to say that again. Because we have been rejected many times during our lives and others have extended conditional love toward us, we have placed conditions on the love that we extend to others. I will love you if. I will love you when. I will love you how. Uh, but, uh, for example, uh, sometimes there are persons who never are able to live up to parents' expectations or the expectations of others around them or maybe a, a, you know, a spouse or significant other. And because of that, something that happened maybe in the past, they are still struggling with this baggage. And because someone held unrealistic expectations on them, now they are living out holding unrealistic expectations on others. But God says, no, I just love you, period. I don't love you because of who you are or what you've accomplished or even how you act. I just love you because. 
And I want you to love others the same way by accepting them the way they are and loving them unconditionally. And I think a major issue here that we struggle with when we talk about accepting people is that we confuse acceptance with approval. God accepts us unconditionally. Jesus loves us no matter what. But that doesn't mean that God doesn't work to, you know, improve and grow uh, and mature and, and draw us closer to him in our lives. But he accepts us no matter what. And we can accept others. We can love others just because we don't agree with everything uh, that they say or everything that they do. I think that's one of the challenges in our world today. If I don't agree with you, I can't accept you. I don't love you. And, and without agreeing uh, with everything, uh, w without agreeing that everything that someone believes, we can love them, <laughs> we can accept them unconditionally. You know, in Jesus' day, Jewish religious law said that a woman caught in an act of adultery, I'm not sure why it just focused on the woman, but it said a woman caught in the act of adultery could be stoned to death. At one point, when some religious leaders caught a woman, many of us are familiar with the story, they dragged her, they caught her in the act, uh, her end, obviously there was a guy involved as well, but they dragged the woman out, and they threw her before Jesus, and they said, okay, uh, you know, the law says we're supposed to stone her, we caught her in the act, and, and what does Jesus do about it? He says, um, okay, uh, anybody who has never sinned, you throw the first stone. So one by one, they all begin to drop the, drop the stone away. So what is Jesus doing here? He's giving acceptance. He's not necessarily approving of everything that she's ever done. In fact, a little bit later, he says, you know, uh, don't do it again. Right? The, the woman that was caught multiple times or had been in multiple relationships, remember, he says, don't do it again. He says to this woman, don't do it again. So it, it's not like he doesn't encourage us to strive to be better. But he accepts us where we are. His love and unconditional acceptance in our lives. And, and so Jesus treats this woman with dignity and respect because God created her and loves her no matter what. Jesus doesn't toe hold it over her head. He may invite her to a different level, but he doesn't lay a guilt trip on her. He doesn't rub it in. He accepts her. The crowd, he basically kind of causes them to all feel embarrassed for what they're there for, and they walk away. So here's the point. What God does for you, for us... He expects you to do for others. God says, I accept you unconditionally. I don't approve of everything that you do, but I love you and accept you unconditionally. And God says, and I want you to do that with everyone else in your life. Romans 15, 7. Accept one another just as Christ. So what Jesus has done for us, we are to do for others no matter who they are, what they look like, how they act, how irritating they may be to us, uh, where they're from, who they voted for, or anything else. All right, so loving like Jesus loves me, first of all, means accepting others the way Jesus accepts me. And then secondly, it means valuing others the way Jesus values me. Values, uh, valuing others the way Jesus values us. How valuable are you? How much are you worth? I'm not talking about what you got in the bank. I'm not talking about your net worth. I'm talking about your self-worth, your God-worth. How valuable are you? Well, let me tell you how valuable you are. You are infinitely valuable to God. First, God created you. Second, Jesus died for you. Third, he put his spirit, a part of himself, in you. And then fourth, he wants to be with you forever, even beyond this life, and to show you a life even beyond this life that is even far greater than this life could ever be. That's how valuable you are to God. You are infinitely valuable to God. Now, what do you think is more valuable to me personally? Famous painting or my kid's painting? A no-brainer. My kid's painting. Why? Because it's my kid. I helped create that kid. So who created you? Who made you? God did. We're his kid. He's our Heavenly Father. What does that mean? It means you're valuable. It means that you are more valuable to God than than anything else. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 4 tells us that everything God created is good. That makes it valuable. And Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 tells us God's handiwork, God's artwork, God's masterpiece. And that makes you valuable. How valuable are you to God? We are of infinite value, of tremendous worth. How do we know this? Because Jesus, son of the living God, who didn't owe us anything, Paid everything on our behalf. First Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19 says, For you know that it was not with perishable things, you could say worthless things like silver or gold, 
that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. Something perfect was given for us so that we could know a relationship with God, far greater than anything, even silver or gold or, or whatever. Uh, that's how much God loves us. That's how valuable that we are to him. And Jesus said, I love you so much. You are so valuable that I am going to give my life so that you can truly live now and forever. That's how valuable you are. And, and then Jesus says, and I want you to treat everyone else. I want you to value everyone else the way that I value and love you. Um, because I don't just love you that way. I love everyone that way, Jesus says. And, and even the people that, that you can't stand. They are valuable to me. I died for them just like I died uh, for, for you. Treat them the same way that I treat you. Value them the same way that I value you. Treat them with dignity and respect, even the people that you disagree with, even the people that you don't really like. Look them in the eye and listen to them when they're talking to you. Treat them with the same respect that you would expect, even if, you, even if they don't necessarily show it to you. Value others the way Jesus values so how do I love others the way Jesus loves me? Well, first of all, I accept them the way Jesus accepts me. And then second, I value them the way Jesus values me. And then third way that we love others like Jesus loves us, is I must forgive others like Jesus forgives me. And I use the word forgives, not forgave, because I'm implying on an ongoing basis. We've talked, uh, we're talking really about a step up here. This is about uh, more than just being a little loving uh, when it comes to loving the way Jesus loves us. This is about being a lot loving. You know, there are some people in our world who actually, uh, uh, who have a lot of struggles in life that actually think that God must like to mess with them. It's like the guy who, in one day, he had his wife walk out on him. He got, his kids got suspended at school for, uh, for drugs. He lost his job, and then he got in a car accident on the way home from work. He gets out of his car. He looks up to heaven, and he cries out, Why me, God, why me? And the clouds open up. And this voice from heaven says, Because some people just tick me off. No, that's not what God says. All the payment for the stuff that we've ever done wrong, Jesus took on the cross. We don't have to pay for it. We will not be held responsible. Jesus paid your debt. He took your wrath when we receive that forgiveness into our lives, when we enter into a, a relationship with him and us to offer the same kind of forgiveness to others, extend the same amount of grace to others that he has extended and offered to us. Colossians 3 and verse 13, bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone, if any of you, so any grievance we have against someone else, well, we have to be willing to forgive them. Forgive as, as God forgave you in the same way, to the same degree, on the same level that I have extended forgiveness to you, God says, you must forgive others. Luke 6 and verse 37 from the Bible says, do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. And we remember in the Lord's Prayer where it says, forgive us our sins as, that little word as implies in the same way or to the same extent that we forgive the sins of others. It almost sounds like God is saying that him forgiving us is dependent on our ability to forgive us. Whatever the case, one thing is clear. God is saying forgiveness is a big deal to him. It's important. And he wants us to think about what it means to have his forgiveness in our lives and how big of a deal it is for us to be willing to forgive others. So I want to ask you, this week, you leave this place, you go out and all the things you have going on this week, who are you going to show acceptance to that you have resisted accepting in the past? Who are you going to show value to that you have tended in the past not to think was worthy of your valuing? Of who are you going to act a little differently toward than maybe what you have in the past? And who are you going to forgive? Who are you going to forgive that up to now you have been unwilling to forgive? I know sometimes that's a journey, that's a process. I get that. But who might we be willing to forgive this week to say, God, I'm going to put it in your hands, and, and, and I'm going to try to act 
in love rather than out of this hurt for so long. Show people Jesus this week. Let the light of Christ shine through you into others. And it just might draw someone else that doesn't know God, that doesn't have a relationship with Jesus, a little closer to him because of you. John 13, 34. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. As I have accepted you, you must accept one another. As I have valued you, you must value one another. As I forgive you, you must forgive one another. Let's pray. God, these are challenges. We use the word love, and, and that sounds uh, pretty easy, but, but God, we know that valuing and accepting and forgiving others is tough. And Lord, give us the ability and the strength to seek to be you with skin on, as I've heard it said, uh, in the lives of others. Lord, help us to uh, seek to draw closer to you every day, and Lord, to treat others with the same love and value and acceptance and forgiveness with which you have treated us. God, let it be so. Give us the strength to do so, and may you receive honor and glory from it. In Jesus' name. Our Father everlasting, the all-creating one, God Almighty. Would you stand up, Abel? And through your Holy Spirit, conceiving Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior, I believe in God. Judging, our defend, suffer and crucified. Forgiveness is in you. Descended into darkness, you rose in glorious light. Forever seated high. And I believe in God.
Well, as you leave this place this week, may you be reminded that you have been accepted, you are valued, and you are forgiven by the King of kings and Lord of lords who loves you immensely and dearly. May that give you hope this week. May that encourage you this week. And may it challenge us to also extend that love, that acceptance, that value, and that forgiveness to others. Go with the peace and the hope and the joy that only God can offer you in Christ's name. Amen. Have a great week.